Hey everyone, thank you very much for coming. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Margaret Myers and I direct the China and Latin America program here at the Inter-American Dialogue. On behalf of the Dialogue, I'm, I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Tibise Lucina Ramirez, who has been Principal Director of Venezuela's National Electoral Council since 2005. Uh, Dr. Lucena is a sociologist and a graduate of the Central University of Venezuela and holds a master's degree and a PhD from the New School in New York. Uh, Dr. Lucena is, is, recognized, is a recognized expert in issues of, of voter access and has more than 10 years of experience in, in electoral issues. And it seems now that Dr. Lucena and the National Electoral Council are, are destined for a very eventful next couple of years. Um, as we all know, Venezuela's presidential elections will take place next October in less than a year. And there has been much publicity regarding Leopoldo Lopez of, of late, uh, the ruling in favor of his candidacy in the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, and, and whether this ruling will be recognized by Venezuela. Um, Many have also called for, for greater transparency and efficiency in the voting process, and especially as, as the 2012 elections approach. So there is indeed much to discuss and much to learn. And so without further ado, I'll, I'll turn the microphone over to Dr. Lucena, excuse me, Lucena, and we'll plan to follow her presentation with time for questions from the audience. Thank you, Margaret. Um, as everybody knows, I know that, that the uh, election in Venezuela um, uh, calls a lot of attention from all, all over the world, especially next year, 2012, when we have presidential election in October 7, and regional elections in December, and then local elections in April 2013. In other words, all seats, public seats in Venezuela are going to be elected in the, after October 7 and the following uh, seven months. In order to uh, make it shorter, this presentation I'm going to read uh, part of this paper uh, to give some time for all questions that I'm pretty sure you all have. Democracy in Venezuela goes beyond being just a form of government. It has become rather a day-to-day -day form of settled conflicts and an effective way to express political and ideological standpoints. Venezuelan citizens now participate more and have raised more awareness in exercising their rights and their sovereignty. Increased participation in electoral events demonstrates the continuous defeat of abstention thus becoming an instrument of transformation and political struggle and cracks the violent schemes under which difference were settled and dictatorships took over our countries. Today, in Venezuela, voting has gained more value than ever before in our republican life. The classical concepts of democracy as electing and being elected for public office are truthful, continuous, guaranteed, and lawful events. But more importantly, they are guaranteed by approbatory, but multiple electoral mechanisms of the direct participation, such as the recall, consultative, and approbatory referenda. We have been able to define our political geography, control the government management at the all levels through electoral participation, and make transcendental decisions about the national realm, including the reform and amend of our constitution. Venezuela's democratic model requires participation, but its robustness and stress is grounded on its underlying political awareness. This new meaning of democracy favors participation and permanent consultation among all, all citizens. Within this participatory of view of democracy, the National Electoral Council actively participated in the construction of a new political culture in defense of the inclusion of all majority and full respect for the political rights of each and every citizen. 
Venezuelan citizens are the ones making possible the construction, development, and consolidation of our country. They are the basis of all that comes together in a new vision and a new practice of democracy. Our constitution, approved by a popular referendum, comprised the national agreement on the forms in which we have decided to coexist and build our vision of democracy. The strength of this premise lies in the certainty that each and every person can take part of the public domain, be protagonist thereof, and assume direct responsibility in the permanent construction of our daily, of our daily and political life. Example of this are the water table, energy, energy, energy table, health committee, and the group of organized citizens to perform social control on public institutions, among many others. Decreased electoral abstentions, whose exercise arose, to, whose existence arose as a consequence of the decline of Venezuela's former political system, is a major milestone of the current Venezuelan democracy. Since 1998, electoral participation shows the intensity of the political debate existing in the national realm. The realization in votes of the various positions becomes an indisputable proof of the participatory vocation of our citizens. It is worth mentioning that our numerous electoral events have gone beyond off the traditional election of representatives, working as well as a means to listen to the citizens' opinion in matters of national importance. Increased participation lies, of course, in the voters will to exercise their rights, but encompasses altogether the existence of institutional guarantees and actions intended to turn voting into an effective and possible right. The logistic architecture of the vote emerges from a political fact that answers to this question. How many people are served by the electoral system? The answer involves a decision that comprises the ways to organize the electoral role, the infrastructure of the polling center, the civil register, and other related factors that, depending on the position adopted by the institution, might become factors of discrimination of, or political exclusion. The National Electoral Council has decided under the attacks derived from such a stand to include the majorities that were discriminated in the past and take into account the traditional minority exclude such as indigenous and ethnic groups and people with disability. The driving policies of participation are associated with the efforts to include those people whose political leading role was put aside by social inequality. Results speak for themselves. Let's see. Uh, after bringing the register an update of the electoral roll to the people, the gap between Venezuelan of legal voting age Yet, own register and those currently registered in the national role has closed dramatically. The gap, as large as 20% in the 90s and beyond the 90s, beyond back in the 90s, is, uh, is reduced today to 5%. It is not enough, we know that, but we tackle it. The problem of never before, and we are still working on that. That gap is getting too close uh, with the, in the recent years. The same happened uh, the same happened with polling centers. For decades, long distance and overcrowded polling centers and stations compiled against public participation, confining the electoral infrastructure to easy to access, low cost urban center was customary. This policy discriminate all those who live in the rural and suburban areas of the large cities. In 2004, the National Electoral Council gave way to a policy to assess and create new polling centers and stations that brought a substantial growth of, as you can see, 8,400. 
403 hundred uh, polling uh, centers uh, in 2000 to compare to the 14,000 we have today. And probably for the uh, next year, next elections, we want to have uh, more than 14,000, more the number that we have, because constantly we are creating new polling uh, centers closer and closer to the voters. We had uh, voters who had the closest uh, polling station as near as 37 kilometers. And we have also uh, 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 voters who has the polling uh, station uh, four hours in, uh, in a canoe uh, that we have to go and displace uh, themselves in order to exercise the right to vote. Uh, uh, today, uh, it doesn't happen. Today, everybody has a closer uh, uh, polling center. Um, uh, we establish a distance of one kilometer. More than two is just too much for us. But in the past, in the, until 2004, and still, uh, like uh, three or four years ago, still we have a polling center uh, a kilometer from uh, uh, the voters in some community and in urban, and sometimes in urban and sometimes and more often in rural areas. The National Electoral Council brought the right to vote closer to the citizen that had been excluded before. Also, additionally, a policy to clear out overcrowded stations by setting a maximum of 600 voters per station was implemented in order to render the act of voting easier and encourage citizen uh, participation. In 1998, uh, this is some new polling station, exactly. We had, um, this is a polling station, there is some syndrome here. Uh, we have around 700, uh, 7,000 uh, polling table, polling center, polling station. And now we have close to 38,000 uh, uh, polling station. Uh, the increase of the polling station is dramatically uh, in order to ease uh, uh, the, the time uh, for voters to go to exercise the vote. Uh, before we have around 3,000 and sometimes 5,000 people voting in just one polling station. Today, maximum of 600 uh, voters can vote in that polling station. This is all the years that we have had uh, since 1958 uh, uh, elections in Venezuela. Uh, before 1999 constitution, in one single act, voted elected all public seats from president to city hall councillors. And after 1989, uh, the, uh, in Venezuela uh, could elect uh, governors and mayors. Uh, today, there are different uh, constitutional uh, periods. Uh, president say uh, six years, National Assembly five years, uh, for uh, um, um, regional election is four, local election is four years as well. In only ten years we have encompassed constitutional different periods. It's at, it's, it is difficult to the electoral administration, yes, gorgeous it is. I can tell how difficult it is to make all these elections. In all this year, we have had uh, 14, in 11 years, we have, have 14 elections and referendums were held. Not only uh, uh, consultative, uh, the constitutional referenda, but also recalled uh, referenda at the national level as presidential uh, recall referenda. And also, we had in 2006 or seven, I can remember now, then uh, a local recall referenda, um, uh, which uh, uh, as a result of that, they, uh, we have to make, uh, the, the mayor were uh, recalled, and we have to make a new uh, election for this, uh, um, for, for to fill that seat. So it means that the referenda also uh, is, is um, uh, used in Venezuela. We have had elections of all kinds, uh, national, broad, regional, regional, local referendum, uh, uh, national, uh, uh, regional, local. Uh, 
yearly we have around 3,000 unions uh, election that we uh, uh, we perform, and also we have internal and uh, primary election in the poli for the political parties. It has been and it still is a challenge to improve the quality of the electoral events. Uh, give better condition and guarantees an opportunity to the voters. It is not easy, but it's, but it's worthy. One of the most important achievements of the National Electoral Council is having incorporated the use of technology, uh, technological tools in the electoral system. The incorporation of technology has been and continues to be a factor that reinforces the guarantee of the right to vote the physical existence of a ballot, the way, this is our machine, um, the way, mm, the way the machines operate, the paper trail and the ballot box as well as the whole functioning of the station express the symbiotic relationship of a model that is, that is impossible to conceive without recognizing a political path. Our uh, ballots that we can see over there is the, the structure of that ballot is, the, is similar or it's more or less exactly the same that for decades Venezuela has used to vote. This is the machine, um, and the machine after you vote, um, you press vote, we have the paper trail that is set in the, you can set in the uh, uh, ballot box. It's as far as safety uh, mechanism. Is as far as safety mechanisms are concerned, we have defeated the culture of fraud that characterized the previous system. In integrating voting technologies to the process, one of the most important challenges out of changing the model has been that of generating multi multiple verifiable guarantees so the political parties and citizens are able to participate and trust the result of the electoral events. This is yet another great strength of the system, as it is supported by audits and safety and control mechanisms that are permanently evaluated before, during, and after each electoral event. The most important technical and political endorsement is about having audits made alongside the representatives and technicians appointed by the political parties. Each of the facets and stages of the process is audited in order to evaluate and check for the appropriate operation of the system. The acts signed by political parties are kept as auditing records. The construction of the technological voting platform derives from a mandate of the constitutional and the Venezuelan laws. The mandate states a political will to set up a model that guarantees safety and transparency in electoral processes, which ultimately benefits citizen participation and trust. These tasks are performed following an open path paved out of our own hands and efforts. The most conclusive political indicator showing the importance of the automation of our electoral system is observed in the fact that all parties have accepted and respected the results and decision of the National Electoral Council, even when results have been so close as it happened in the referendum for the constitutional reform in 2007 or, on the, or the parliamentary election in 2010. Facts like this have led us to reduce the number of after-event claims to almost zero. The most convincing proof of our success is boasting of auditable levels of control and self-management in technical processes that guarantee safety and transparency in our electoral process. We have overcome those shameful, shameful years of exclusion and all practices that deny rights to citizens for the benefits of particular interests and turned the electoral events into an act prone to corruption profit and fraud. Today, we have more and new challenges. We hope for more and better democracy. We strive for citizens to be fully, fully knowledgeable 
on how the station operates. The electoral act is now day-to-day fact that supports the integrated nature of the Venezuelan electoral model and its civil and political relevance. The permanent presence of political parties of all ideological orientation and an, an active factor as an active factor in electoral events is a principle of the National Electoral Council and a key element in consolidating the new methodology intended to manage changes, changes in the moral, moral and particularly to lead efficiently the natural tension of the process. We are committed to vote automation. We listen to those who criticize us on the grounds of their own interests but we enjoy the political and ethical recognition of the Venezuelan people and of the electoral authority and body worldwide. The most convincing evidence of the above statement lies on how the National Electoral Council has cooperated with union and professional organizations in conducting of their internal electoral processes, including, including also the political organizations that have asked for our support in electing their authorities and holding primary elections to choose their candidates. The guarantees given in each electoral event are a result of the permanent dialogue with political parties. The system continuously nourishes itself from criticism, requests, and suggestions. This is a permanent and honest relationship that acknowledges I aim it a political debate, the warranties required for the stakeholders and the legitimate authority of the electoral branch of government. Participatory democracy is a phenomenon that emerged in most countries of the region, and Norway is like a fresh breeze of renovation and change. The role of electoral bodies gains even more importance here. We believe that even though it's impossible to transfer models or recipes, challenges are common and answers are similar in essence. Electoral cooperation in electoral matters has become a responsibility rather than a will. In this sense, the National Electoral Council has favored mechanisms and programs that enable peer-to-peer -peer relationships without any asymmetries or political subordination among the institutions. We move forward in the construction of solid links with the electoral authority of the region and the multiplied activity of international electoral accompaniments are a living example of how going together is the only way to walk on firm steps. We are working toward the construction of mechanisms that exist exceeds the current weight of shading experience. In Caracas, we have held many meetings with the electoral authority of the hemisphere to debate on the different view and proposal of each country. The result of this process is contained in the reference framework of common criteria and optimal procedures implemented by the electoral bodies and authorities to guarantee the management and control of electoral process. Finally, the National Electoral Council, just like our counterparts in other countries in the region, is open to international accompaniments in our electoral processes. We are willing to share our experience and know about others. We respect, we respect the principle of severity, non-interference, self-determination, and respect for the rights of each country. We demand the same treatment for our people. We are deeply convinced that the time to assert our republican and institutional history has arrived. Our countries have made real contribution to democracies all over the world by strengthening our own democracies and providing massive warranties for political rights and the inclusion of all citizens. Latin America builds the bright future of democracy and humankind. Thank you very much. I'm going to be ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Lucena, for that very interesting presentation and for giving us a sense of certain improvements that have been made to the electoral process over the past few years. Um, I'm sure that your presentation has generated quite a few questions. So if anybody would like to start, we'll go ahead and turn it over to questions from the audience. 
have any? Well, I can begin with a question if you'd like. Um, I'm wondering if, if uh, you might comment a, a little bit on, on recent polling statistics that have come out regarding Leopoldo Lopez and, and his ability to um, uh, run eventually. What do you think? Um, the decision of, of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights will, will be upheld in Venezuela. Well, uh, this is an um, um, uh, issue that has been going on in the last uh, months, and I, I, I would say in the last uh, uh, few years. Um, as I said before, uh, the National Electoral Council uh, does not uh, unable or disable anyone to vote. Uh, uh, Leopoldo has his political uh, right uh, full. He has a party, he participates, he votes. He actually, he got a primary, uh, an internal election to choose his authority at the beginning of this year, and we helping him to do so, and he, his election has around uh, um, 8,000, 90,000 voters, so uh, he's not active politically. This um, um, uh, uh, um, um, inhabilitation, I don't know the word in English, is unable. Inability. Yes, inability. Inability is, um, it, it was for another uh, Venezuelan institution, um, um, we just, I mean, for us, for the uh, National Electoral Council, he, he, I mean, he's a political, politically, he has all his rights. Uh, however, if his uh, inability is to perform a public seat, whatever it is, even is elected or any other public seats, and, and if uh, he has, um, um, in other words, I mean, he's politically he's he he has his rights, but he cannot perform any um, um, uh, public seats. He cannot be in charge of any public seats because it's an, ad, an administrative um, inability. I do want to follow up on, on that question to be um, certain of what you're saying and also ask about um, the, the campaign itself before voting day. Uh, there have been criticisms in the past by groups like Ojo Electoral, uh, domestic elections watchdog, that the CNE and other institutions haven't effectively refereed campaign publicity in the months leading up to the voting day. And I wonder what the status of that is. But I also wanted to be clear about what you're saying about the CNE does, does or does not have a role in determining the eligibility of someone like Leopoldo Lopez. So no. is, that the, is that the court? That's at the court. We don't have, we, we, this is not our uh, constitutional uh, uh, activity, it's not among us. We, we don't have a role in that. So it, it, it is a court? that will decide? It's the court to decide. And of course, um, this is a, a constitutional institution and, and we have to, you know, wait for the court to decide, but we don't have role in that. Uh, regarding the campaign, it's very interesting what is happening right now. Uh, all, um, uh, the whole branch of, uh, of a political party are uh, more or less in campaign right now because they are uh, they they have primary to choose a candidate in February 12th next year, so everybody is is drawn in campaign uh, governors who wants to run for president, uh, 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 politician who wants you know in the national assembly who wants to run for president uh, uh, for the president's. Uh, 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 elections and you know everybody's 
somehow in campaign, but we 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 don't have um, an election uh, still. When we have the date set, we still are not have. Um, we don't. We are not in in election time yet. Uh, so the law is very clear. Uh, the campaign time is only. F it depends. Could be 30, 45, 60 days. So we are. Uh, we have called to make some concert out of that pre-campaign, which is no very accurate term, but just to illustrate, it's a pre-campaign time. Um, because we don't have campaign yet. The campaign is, is going to start probably 60 days or 45 days before uh, the election. All this, what's happening right now, is not, um, is not included in the law. Uh, we don't have norm to, uh, I mean, never, ever before. We have um, uh, uh, control uh, of events that happen or campaign out of, of the uh, formal campaign uh, uh, before an election. And uh, in the National Electoral Council, we have discussed and debated this uh, uh, very well, that actually we might need, we, we have been controlling, we have implementing many activities to control um, a political parties' campaign in order to respect the, the norms and the rules we have, the law, the constitution, the norms that we all we have before all the election. And uh, actually, we, we, we have um, um, uh, a special program for that, that we follow the campaign, not only in the national wide, uh, we followed in, in, in TV, and um, implementing in the even in the parish in the municipal, but also we have debate that we don't have enough um, uh, um, uh, uh, legal uh, uh, tools, uh, very strong that allow us to um, to make uh, um, more uh, uh, hard uh, following of this campaign. For example. Um, um, for example, we have we have uh, we follow the f the funding of these uh, political parties for the campaign, and we follow we audit the, the books, we audit all these uh, 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 funding of the political party, and where the money comes, where the money goes, and actually in the last. Um, in the last, I would say, five, six years, all political parties have learned how to use and how to, to uh, um, rendir cuenta? The accountable, the, the, the money where they go. Uh, nevertheless, we don't have, uh, uh, they are internal um, um, a rule that we have, norms that we have in the National Electoral Council. There is no a law. Uh, uh, by the um, the national assembly uh, strong enough for us to to make a, a, a following uh, stronger for this uh, funding for the campaign and uh, but we we are working on that we want to uh, have a, we we're working in a proposal to to make it a, 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 to propose to the national assembly to debate a, a stronger law for for the funding and for the campaign. But still, uh, uh, we are not in campaign yet. The campaign period uh, start uh, 45, uh, 30 depends on the election, uh, before uh, uh, the election. And we, uh, we implement different uh, activities to follow all the campaign national wide and regional and local as well. For all of them, but it's pretty loud in Venezuela. Uh, for the last couple of months, there has been certain figures in the armed forces, the Venezuelan armed forces, saying that they would not recognize a, a victory from the opposition or any other than the revolution. Uh, what is the CNE, the CNA's position about this issue or your personal opinion on this issue? And if this kind of statement persists, will the CNA have a, a, a public statement condemning this uh, this uh, manifestation or something like that? Yeah, um, 
is is this is this in in um um in a different uh, way that have run these uh, such a comments uh, there is no uh, political party no institution that has to assert and say more often and in national change the about the recognition of result that the uh, military force in venezuela every time before elections every time before election they uh, they they um aim to the country the whole country in national uh, public change on tv on radio on every uh, uh, single media to assure venezuelan citizens that they are in electoral matters subordinated to the uh, national electoral council and also that they're going to recognize uh, uh, results no one in venezuela no even institution no even a political party uh, um, uh, assure such a things before election as the uh, military force does before every single election and also uh, uh, they always after this um, uh, comment that you said before that the media may such a fuss about that um, uh, high level uh, military has exactly say the same thing that I'm saying see, that they always they, they are subordinated in electoral matters to the national electoral power the national electoral council and also that they recognize election they are a very good branch a very good uh, um, um, uh, support for uh, for us in the same that they they keep an eye in, in safety and um, uh, in the polling station and also you know for the distribution of the um, machines and and um, uh, and electoral uh, uh, subject that we use. Back here. Mm -hmm. Can you wait for the microphone? Thank you. Good morning, Madam President. My name is Alex Sutton. I'm from the International Republican Institute. And my question is about one of the comments you made regarding uh, the, the specific wording was an electoral accompaniment um, internationally. And I'd like to, you know, that, that word, um, stands out because normally we talk about international observers and I know right now in Nicaragua there's a distinction made between accompaniment and observation I wondered if you could um, elaborate on that distinction yes um, it's something that we we have been um, uh, meeting together uh, especially the authority and electoral bodies of the whole uh, continent and we have been in the last I would say three years our best practices our best uh, way to resolve problems it doesn't matter the the size of uh, of, of the country, uh, countries such as uh, Brazil, for example, that has a, a role, uh, uh, hundred thousand people, and uh, other countries with uh, uh, electoral role like uh, one million, it doesn't matter the size. The problem always are the same or similar, the same, and, this, and the result always is similar as well with the particularity of each country, you know, with the tradition and the history and the uh, uh, political basis of each country, but more or less the problem are more or less the same. The same tensions in the, uh, within, because it is, it's a matter of democracy, the tensions within democracy uh, when you are um, uh, uh, Administrating an electoral um, um, uh, events, uh, the electoral roles, the problems that are in electoral roles, uh, the, the the problem to solve to guarantee that everybody has to vote. So we meet together and we elaborate this uh, framework that I, I uh, quote, uh, which is a reference. For all of us, after two years of debate, uh, how can is um is is it's a book, it's a reference book for us to have, you know, how to solve uh, some of our uh, problem that we have, logistically, especially, technologically. It doesn't matter also that the election is, my, it might be um, uh, automated election. It could be a manual election as well. It doesn't matter. The problem is logistically, 
is more or less uh, the same. And uh, we have been elaborating as well uh, our common ground in observation, international observation, and accompaniment, uh, trying to elaborate, elaborate further about that, the distinction about one and another, because there are countries such as Brazil or, or uh, Uruguay, uh, Chile or Argentina, that they have different degrees. Brazil doesn't have uh, international observers, for example. Argentina doesn't either. They don't accept uh, international observers. They might, uh, they are inviting now, no? Now I started inviting because we have been discussing uh, uh, this, uh, these issues. And, and uh, there is a difference between mission, mission of observation, um, that can last months, it's a matter of months, and they go, you know, for months, one organization and stayed uh, in the in the country. And there is uh, observation as well, international observation, uh, can last 15 days, 10 days, and accompaniment uh, can last a week or so. It depends of each country what they say. But we are trying to find some difference. Sorry. Just to follow up to that, if I may, I'm still unclear what the difference between an accompaniment and an observation is. Um, is it is the distinction that you would need to notify the CNE beforehand about where you're going, as in Nicaragua, we or don't, yes, because I'm don't. unclear. The word choice seems to be very specific, and I just wanted to know what the difference is. Yeah, we don't we don't have um, uh, missions in Venezuela since uh, 2006. We always we have accompaniment that we have called accompaniment, which we invite. We invite institution, we invite uh, uh, United Nations or OAS, uh, we invite uh, um, uh, um, personalities, political parties, we, we invite um, um, to come to Venezuela and uh, to share, to share all the accomplishments that we have and also to see the Venezuelan electoral process, but the only one, the only institution in Venezuela uh, because it's said it just like that in the Constitution. The only institution in Venezuela who guarantees elections is the National Electoral Council, no international observers. I wonder if you might give us a sense of, of the inner workings of, of the CNE, the way that, how, how things work within the organization itself, um, decision-making processes. If you were to decide, for example, to postpone an election or push the date back or something like that, how does that, um, you know, how does that decision? We are, made? yes, the board is uh, integrated by five uh, persons. We are five. And we, um, there is always, there is a proposal and we debate it. Sometimes we, our mechanism of understanding is that we debate sometime for hours, hours and hours, hours, until trying to reach um, uh, uh, unanimity, unanimity, mm -hmm. all votes. This is our our goal always: try to gain five votes against zero, and we work. And we debate and debate and debate. most of the time, I will say, 95 of our decisions are made five to zero. And if we cannot, well, we vote and, and that's it. As every uh, of everybody, of every um, 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 of all the bodies that are, you know, by majority, you have to vote and and make the decision. That I would say 95% of our decisions are uh, five votes or so. Um, let's wait for the microphone. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lucena Ramirez, um, for your presentation. Um, there have been certain claims of uh, political parties and uh, 
about uh, people, for example, that have been uh, that people that are voting, and uh, about um, you know, for for example, political partisanship uh, close to the centros de votación. So uh, I was wondering if there have been any actions that have been taken into consideration by the Consejo Nacional Electoral. Thank you. you mean uh, political uh, activity close to the, the yes. Yes, yes, they all do that. They all do that, and 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 this is a, a problem. It's not a, a major problem. It's a loud, I would say, loud problem, because uh, you know uh, it can make a lot of noise. Uh, but everybody, you know, all political parties, they all do that, and we have a restriction. It's like uh, 600 meters, the distance of safety um, uh, distance uh, for the political parties to put a kiosk or whatever they want, uh, not to make a campaign or, or issues uh, um, to campaign for a candidate or, or political party, but but to have water or assistance to the voters, to fo the followers. And uh, sometimes, yes, they, they intend to break that and put it closer to the polling center. And the few of them that they do that, I mean, we just put it out. But we know that always. And we try to always try to, uh, uh, most of the time, we always try to make it the, for convincement. I mean, uh, to, resp to, to convince them to respect the 600 meters distance, the safety uh, distance from the uh, polling station. And most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it does. It works. And it's not that much, but everybody do that. It's, it's, I don't know why they do that. If they, if they know that always we're going to push them back to the 600 meters. But it's not a, a, a big issue in that, in that sense. Um, talking about technology, um, like we, now we have the electronic system and everything, but, um, but still we're getting results at like 2 or 3 a.m. Out of curiosity, what, how is the process on election night? Why does it take that long? Like yeah. we have a, in other countries in the world, results are usually at like by 10, 11 p.m. Exactly. So why this late? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, uh, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to answer this question. Um, in the, for example, in 2008, we have regional elections, remember? And we issued the uh, results uh, by 9, almost all the country. After midnight, we announced the results of uh, Carabobo and Táchira, two states, that the results were so close, but so close, that we have to wait until we had 100% of the whole vote to announce the results. And this is a beauty because um, we have to wait, but we, we, we give uh, the official results. We count, we are counting votes. We are not counting, we, we, we don't do um, uh, quick counts as in other countries. In, the, in, the, in Latin America, at least, uh, we are the only country who give uh, official results in hours. There is no other country who do that. Uh, sometimes in other countries, they, I mean, this is their, their, this is their law. Uh, they can start counting votes a week after the election or a month after the election. We are counting, as uh, we say, wills. We are counting votes in minutes, in hours. And we, 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 we announce the result with official, more than the 95 or sometimes 98% uh, of the votes counted already in the same day. Uh, nobody does something like that in this continent, nobody but us, and this is very important. That's why we don't have after-event claims. It's almost zero, because everybody knows that this is, I mean, these are the, the, the votes. There is no approximate votes. There is no a projection. There is no quick count. 
they are votes. Um, this is what uh, allow us as well to have this uh, in, in last year in National Assembly. Uh, there were some um, uh, uh, um, mm, districts that we didn't uh, give uh, the result uh, uh, with the uh, with the you know the first uh, the first bulletin. Uh, we did it like uh, three hours later or four hours later. I don't remember. But the difference was sometimes in one of the districts was as much as 20 votes and everybody accepted the results. Because before we give the results, we give to the political party, the main political party, we, we give a CD. And in the CD contains the acts that are in the bulletin that we're going to give. So because they, they in, in that sense, they can check their numbers with our numbers. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guarantee. That's why everybody accepts. All the other thing is just political things. We have a, uh, sure. What about the, the, the 2007 referendum, the one that uh, the, with the constitutional reform, that there has, hasn't been like the official results? No, 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 no. They do not. Don't believe. They, they are in the, in, we gave it, it's in the, in the, uh, in the, our official bulletin, it's issue, it was issue all the time. Uh, it, it, it was there, always. And, and again, this is a very good example, how close can be the, the, the numbers, the figures, the results, and still everybody uh, respect that and accept it. Uh, that, that, this is important. It's the way that we Venezuelans say to the world. I mean, we uh, decide our uh, conflicts through the vote, that democracy. We have a question back here. It was kind of already just asked, but I, would, I did want to follow up on the 2007 election because it was so important. It was the only one lost by, by the Chavez administration, and I recall um, at the time uh, that the voting, uh, I mean, the counting went on very late, and uh, and tension was beginning to build. Uh, there were fears that it was being delayed uh, because of manip manipulation, perhaps by the uh, by the administration. Uh, there were fears that uh, if a decision wasn't made soon, regardless of what the outcome was, there would be violence. So at the time, I remember even rumors that that uh, there was it was so close uh, that um, the Chavez administration was being pressured to just declare defeat in order to avoid violence. We also had a speaker here a couple of weeks ago who said that uh, the, official, the, the official tally ended up being a 2% uh, loss uh, uh, in the referendum, uh, whereas the real uh, f uh, figure was more like 4% uh, loss, but that was, the, that was the, an arrangement made. Uh, given all of these different stories, I thought I would take advantage of your presence here uh, to uh, clarify this. I, I just by myself. My name is Philip French. I'm with the American Committees on Foreign Relations. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, if I don't uh, remember wrong, I think that the difference was 1.3 or 2, not 2 percent, 1.2 or something like like that. Uh, as I say before, we always give to the uh, political party a CD with all the uh, with the, all the acts that we wanna announce as uh, in the results. So they have. Uh, uh, the uh, digital figures to match with what they have in the paper because all the political parties keep a recipe of the result of each machine, the major political party. So they, they, everybody knows the, result, the results because of that. I mean, can, everybody can check it. Not only every citizen can check whether his uh, uh, vote is there because we have the paper trail. But also we have the audit after the the electoral event. The audit means it's like a 54% of the machines. And also, I mean, there are a lot of uh, mechanisms to to uh, assure and guarantee the results. Uh, the paper trail, the 54 afterwards uh, audits, and also the act that every political, major political party has uh, uh, with the result of each machine. And also, uh, we have, uh, we give them, uh, before we give the result, we have in digital and CD all the, the acts that we want to announce as a result. 
And on the top of that, the day after elections, we perform um, a means of transmission audit, exactly the same day, the day before and the day after. I mean, there are uh, a lot of mechanisms to ensure and to assure the citizens, uh, the voters, that this is our, those are the results. Uh, others, things beyond that are political argumentations and whatever they want to say, but uh, uh, but these are the uh, actual objective scientific uh, facts that allows everybody, not as an act of faith, to believe in the results, as an act of objective demonstration and guarantees uh, in the real life. I wanted to follow up on the mo the elections monitoring, but with regard to domestic Venezuelan civil society groups, I mentioned Ojo Electoral before, which is a Venezuelan group that I think played a very positive role in boosting confidence in the system. I think they were technically very capable, and politically they were adept at winning the confidence of the government and opposition parties to build uh, reassurance that the system works and we've seen rising participation rates. Ojo Electoral no longer exists, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is unfortunate. And I wonder if, if there's any other domestic monitoring group that you think has uh, similar capacity that is applying for accreditation or is already active, because I think that would be a valuable role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> normally, uh, there are four groups. Unfortunately, uh, Ojo Electoral, uh, as you say, no longer exists. They dissolved uh, months ago. Uh, but I think that they're going to start over a, a different group. And it's, it's, uh, uh, there are always participate around four or five groups, different groups. Uh, uh, education Assembly, I think, is one of them. And two more that I don't remember the name right now. Uh, they always participate in the same uh, conditions and the same opportunity as uh, uh, Ojo Electoral. All of them have the same, exactly the same, the same number of, uh, because we want to give them, you know, uh, same condition to all of them. Um, no, the number of observers, uh, uh, the facility as well. And, and everything, and I have, I, we, we hope, we always, uh, we always hope that uh, uh, domestic observer, we give importance to domestic observer because, I mean, they, they, we are Venezuelans, they are Venezuelan as well, so for, for us it's, it's very important uh, uh, domestic uh, observer, and, and we, uh, we discussed uh, recently about this, and, and and I met one of the former integrated of uh, Ojo Electoral, and yeah, I, I hope that they reunite uh, uh, in a different uh, group, maybe, but they can perform um, uh, yeah. internal observations. We'll go right over here first and then back there. Right up here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is John Maisto. I was ambassador for the United States in Nicaragua when President Chavez was elected in 1998. And you recall that for that election, there was a huge amount of international observation uh, and domestic observation as well. My question is uh, for the upcoming election next year. Um, Will the Consejo uh, Supremo Electoral Nacional. Nacional, excuse me, invite international, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> such as the European Union, the Organization of American States? I noticed in your comments you mentioned the United Nations, but you did not mention the regional organization or the European Union. And I'm wondering about other entities such as the Carter Center um, and those who traditionally observe elections. We, we call it accompaniment, and uh, uh, we always have around uh, 
more than 200 or 300 uh, uh, persons all over the world coming to Venezuela in each election. And it's very important because I would say literally the eyes of the world are, are on Venezuela uh, in each of our elections, especially the national election referendums or presidential elections. So uh, we haven't decided who are we going to invite yet. But of course, we want to have accompaniments for the presidential election. Maybe for the local election, it's going to be reduced. But uh, for presidential, uh, yes, of course, we want to have. And probably for regional election as well, I would say. But we haven't decided yet. I'm a little confused. You said you haven't decided yet. Uh, who exactly? Uh, we haven't decided exactly the names. Uh, of the person who we are going to invite on the or the institutions, but of course we're going to invite some of them. I'm not talking about persons. I'm talking about the United Nations. I'm talking about person and and institutions. That's what I'm saying. Institutions as well as persons. Persons and institutions. Thank you. But you know we are a group of five. We are a a, a body. The Electoral National Council is a body who makes the decisions uh, after the debate. So I, I, we have to wait for the debate and vote and then make the decision. Over here on the right, we had a question. Good morning. Katiana Yako Rum Kunas with IRI. Um, I just had a quick question regarding the primary process and the role that the CNE will be playing in that process and how it differs. Um, uh, with regards to the role that the CNE will play for the just general elections? This is a, a recent uh, um, a thing that is happening in, in Venezuela. In the last three years, I will say, three, no more than four years, the uh, political party uh, asked to the Electoral Council uh, to help them with the primary. But not only the primary, also with the internal uh, election to choose uh, authority. And it has been a great, wonderful experience. We have um, uh, helped, I would say, in, in the whole range of political parties and color in Venezuela, the whole range. Not each of them, but in the whole range. Um, um, for the uh, last year election national assembly, we did a primary for the um, uh, the party uh, uh, PESU and also for the political party that opposed President Chavez uh, in different days. And they choose their candidates uh, uh, with this primary. And for the presidential, and always, uh, also uh, for the years before, for the regional election, for governors as well, to Copay and other political parties who ask us to help them with that. And for the primary uh, is February uh, 14 next year. We are actually working already with the with with, uh, with a technical electoral uh, uh, table. We call that, uh, and we. Um, we support them in all sense. Uh, it's with machines. Uh, we have to prepare them and distribute material and everything with uh, a polling station, safety, um, um, roles, uh, electoral roll, everything. It's like uh, any other election, uh, national election. Or, uh, it's a full election, and we are, we are working with them. Uh, uh, in the sense that also we are pretty aware that this is their election and if, if they have their norms and we respect that as well. This is a very, uh, has been a, a very wonderful experience for both of us, for the political parties and to the institutions because we have been uh, learning a lot from each other. Very interesting. And also, uh, I have to uh, say this, also uh, every day there are more unions that uh, ask us also to, to uh, make uh, automated uh, elections. Already we support them in more than 3,000 elections each year, 
but now they want to make the relation uh, with uh, uh, with machines and institution as well. It's 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 uh, it's, it's, it's gonna it's it's like uh, every day is is more the um, uh, um, every day uh, common uh, issue to make uh, automated uh, relations at all levels. Unkind. Madam President, thank you. That's a, an interesting comment about the open um, uh, regulated elections of unions. Um, my question is back to the, um, the disqualification of candidates. In 2008, um, almost 400, I think it was 386 candidates were disqualified in local elections. If I think that's the, the number that has been cited you know, in a lot of different articles. Um, and those, I, if I'm correct, those were disqualified by the CNE at the request of the government, and, at the, and Leopoldo Lopez was one of those uh, candidates. And at the time, you know, the CNE asked that the, you know, the court make a quick and speedy decision on those cases, yet including on Leopoldo Lopez, they haven't yet made those decisions. So my question is, Twofold. One, you know, how will the how will the your body evaluate a continued request for disqualifications if the court still hasn't made decisions on all of those other candidates? And second, um, what kind of process do you anticipate unfolding if and when the government asks for disqualification of other candidates during this election cycle? Is it an open process? What kind of observation is there for that? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if I uh, heard right, but we do not regulate unions uh, um, elections. Just uh, to clarify, we we help them in their own terms and norms, internal norms. We we don't regulate that. Uh, they give us the the norm, and we help them in the norm that they are reading for them. And uh, for this qualification of candidate, there is uh, the law is clear, and the norm as well. There are requirements to to run for uh, any seat, public seat, uh, for to be a candidate. Uh, it's not a government who plays the requirements. It's in the law, so we follow the law. And all the candidates, uh, all the political party, uh, they um, uh, they propose their candidates. Uh, I, maybe you are uh, relating to the case of the inability, the administrative. Um, ah, okay, because you say the government disqualification that uh, gave us like an order to disqualify. No, there is a, a, it's, a, it's in the law. What are the requirements to be a candidate? It's no a government uh, qualification or disqualification. It's no the it, uh, the, the, um, the electoral uh, events in Venezuela are run and administrated by the Electoral National Council, the Constitution and the law. And and about the, the uh, uh, inhabilitation of the candidates is uh, is by the uh, um, uh, general controller. Is uh, administrative uh, inhabilitation, and uh, uh, the National Electoral Council doesn't uh, inhabilitate. We don't have a role in that. It's an administrative inhabilitation, and we uh, deal with the political rights, no administrative. And Dr. Lucena, just in, in case nobody else has one, I have one more question. Um, You've given us a good sense of a, a lot of the improvements that have been made to the system, as I said earlier, you know, um, procedural improvements, access-related improvements, technological improvements, and so on. Um, what do you see as the areas that still need improvement, that would require reform? Um, and do you see any other countries' systems, maybe countries in Latin America, maybe elsewhere, as models, as sort of the ideal? In uh, Latin America, only uh, Brazil has an um, uh, automated uh, system, and they are improving their uh, electoral system, uh, making 
they are they now trying to have a, a machine with a paper trail, which we have. They don't. And uh, other countries, uh, they have um, uh, automated system in different level for the transmission sometimes, uh, but no the whole, no the voting system as we have it. So our system more advanced and secure in the in in the region. And uh, we have for the next elections, um, it's not there, but uh, if we can put the the, the ballots. We have now, uh, uh, for the next uh, election next year, uh, we have the same uh, ballot but a uh, double size. Uh, double size because uh, I think that we can um, make it easier for the uh, voters to see the names of the candidates, the symbols of the political party, of the preference, and it's going to be easier as well for everybody, but especially for the elderly, uh, to push in the ballot to in order to choose their candidates, for example. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's, uh, the ballot used to be like this wise. Now it's going to be two and a half uh, plus, uh, larger. Mm -hmm. Two times uh, larger. See, mm -hmm. two times uh, uh, larger. And it's going to be easier for everybody to push. And, and before, we have um, uh, in the ballot uh, oval where the, the voters uh, made the, uh, the vote, actually vote. We eliminate that. It was a small oval. And now in any part of the, of the um, uh, card, uh, they, can, uh, they can choose the party and the candidate of their preference. We want to see the illustration. So we can pull it up shortly. <laughs> we have technological improvements that need, need to be made here, too. <laughs> I can help you. <laughs> India, for example, uh, meanwhile. India, for example, this is the largest democracy in the world. It's, they have the electoral roll uh, around uh, 700,000. Uh, Million people. This is a, this is something they they spend like a week or two vote just voting. It's very very interesting, and they have a machine. They they are automated also, but it's more like an automated uh, um, a box, and they want to improve their automation as well, uh, um, and and we have a. a, a we have been uh, meeting because they want us to um, uh, uh, exchange experience because uh, the security that we bring and the guarantee we bring to the voters, uh, especially for because of the paper trail, is very important. It's, 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 it's pretty secure. No way. No, but that's okay. <laughs> I can draw. Any final questions? One more. I want to go back to what Walsh and, and Mayors ask you, and I want to ask you this question in Spanish in order to be clear. Um, um, quiero ir atrás con la pregunta de las inhabilitaciones políticas y um, el rol del CNE después de la sentencia de la Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Ya todas las instancias a nivel nacional, bien sea la Contraloría, las Cortes y el Tribunal Supremo de Justicia, fueron agotados. Por eso, eh, los inhabilitados llevan el caso a la Comisión y luego la Comisión a la Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Eh, la, la sentencia de la Corte es muy clara y ordena al Estado venezolano y particularmente al Consejo Nacional Electoral que debe asegurar que las sanciones de inhabilitación no constituyan impedimento para la postulación del señor Leopoldo López y los otros inhabilitados. Es decir, la Corte no hace un llamado a que esto sea revisado nuevamente en jurisdicción venezolana ni que vaya a ninguna Corte, sino hay un dictamen muy particular al Consejo Nacional Electoral. Y yo creo que por eso las preguntas en la sala acerca de la respuesta del CNE, porque pareciera que es el CNE... Oh, que afirma que es el CNE quien debe 
resguardar que Leopoldo López y otros inhabilitados puedan postularse. ¿Qué va a hacer el CNE? Porque nuevamente esto no es una decisión que corresponde al Tribunal Supremo. Gracias. Voy a corresponderte exactamente igual como lo dije en inglés porque es exactamente la misma respuesta. A ver si también te queda este, claro, ¿verdad? El Consejo Nacional Electoral no inhabilita ni deshabilita porque esta es una inhabilitación administrativa. No hay una, no hay una habilitación política. Es una habilitación está inhabilitado administrativamente, entonces nosotros no, no tenemos ninguna eh, nada que decir allí, si eh, no con el caso de él en particular, porque Leo, eh, este, eh, digamos, él tiene todos sus derechos políticos asegurados, incluso cuando nos pidió, voy a repetir otra vez lo que dije en inglés, eh, cuando nos pidió el, la, el la, hacer las elecciones del partido que él estaba formando, que fue una elección, por cierto, muy muy bonita, en el sentido que compartimos muchísimo en la en esa en, en esa organización. Este, eh, digamos, el Consejo le dio el apoyo total, porque sus, sus derechos políticos están, están allí. Esta es una inhabilitación administrativa. Entonces, es, no es, a lo mejor de la institucionalidad, a lo mejor en la Corte no se entendió exactamente cuál es la institucionalidad que funciona en Venezuela, pero esto es esto es lo que está en la Constitución. Nosotros no jugamos allí un rol, no tenemos nosotros que decidir, sino esperar lo que dice el Tribunal Supremo de Justicia, en todo caso que debe darle respuesta a esa, a esa cuestión, porque no está inhabilitado políticamente, está inhabilitado para ejercer cargos públicos administrativamente, no solamente él, sino todas las personas que se les han hecho, se les han seguido casos, eh, se les ha abierto casos y se les ha seguido por cuestiones de corrupción administrativa. Entonces, es a la, a la, al tribunal que le corresponde. Nosotros no tenemos uh, um, sino que esperar. Thank you. Um, Just to clarify, because I think there is some confusion as to what the role of the CNE is there, and I think, I mean, you, you keep clarifying that the CNE does not have uh, the, the power to make the decision whether anybody is inhabilitated or not, but um, I think in, in past um, articles and information that has been gathered here is the fact that the CNE actually either approves or does not approve a um, a resolution that is sent from the general controller. So does the CNE have the power to say yes or no to that decision, or simply when the, the decision is sent to the CNE, you have to just approve it and implement it? Yeah, we, we, we have, you know, uh, we apply in Venezuela, as in every other country, institutional work. They, they have the ranch of, uh, of performance uh, uh, established in, le in, in the law or in the Constitution, and uh, they impose uh, an inhabilitation. We have to apply it. It's like uh, you have to decide if you, you uh, follow the law or not. Even if you don't like the law, you have to follow, I think. We don't have, because we don't have role there. I mean, this is another institution, constitutional institution, by the way. And they are applying, and we have to follow. Otherwise, it's breaking, is like pushing the CNA uh, to break the law or the institution. We have to wait. And we apply. And if in political, uh, our uh, per, uh, duties, uh, constitutional duty, uh, the political rights, and we, no, not only for one particular citizen, for all citizens. Uh, that's why we have been working so hard um, uh, with the polling station, the, uh, the polling center, improving the guarantees, uh, improving the, the, trying to make that everybody the, the, the same opportunity to vote, uh, I mean, in, in the whole, it's the, the agenda of the uh, National Electoral Council is the whole country, it's the whole citizen, it's the voters, not only one particular citizen, yet we pay attention to each uh, one of them, and that's why we support political parties, 
that, again, not only one, but all political parties in their decision that they make uh, when they uh, want to participate. One, they say they want to participate in one uh, election. We support it. Okay. One last question over here in the back. Well, actually, I have three questions. The first question is, what were the criteria for redistribution of national uh, assembly election last year? Uh, if you can justify that, because it doesn't uh, show the parity of the votes, actually opposition got more votes than government, and government got uh, more more deputies than, than the opposition. Um, the second question is about the use of the media. Uh, as, as we know, the government is uh, always uh, always abuses about the the use of the media, and actually uh, he can interrupt any campaign event of the opposition if uh, he called for the system, the national uh, system of television, and uh, he can interrupt any other uh, campaign event. And I remember in 2007 and in 2009, uh, the CNA actually prohibited some of the opposition spots. Um, and you have never prohibited any spot from the government. And the third question is about uh, uh, that the mood uh, asked about the international observation for the primaries in, in February. Uh, that the, my. <laughs> this is like another conference as well. Uh, to, for your uh, information, um, a, a little bit in the what we said uh, before when uh, with your uh, former question here, um, there were spots not only uh, uh, from opposition but all also for the government that we banned because they broke the the the, the rules. So maybe you don't know, but uh, for your information, it, it works in both sides. But one of the sides might be louder. Uh, with the claims, but that's okay. This is part of the, the democracy. Uh, but the spots uh, that we took out of uh, air, uh, there were many, some of them, that broke the law. So we took out of the air. That, that's, that, it, that is one in, in, in our the power to do so. But uh, runs in different directions, not only for one side, but another, and others as well. Um, and everybody complains, and, and I think this is a good thing <laughs> because everybody complains. Uh, just uh, uh, a comment that uh, a colleague, one of my colleagues, uh, uh, the president of the electoral body in one of the Latin American countries, he called me after we announced the, the date of the, our next three elections. And he calls me and he says, Tivisai, what have you done? Everybody is happy because all our announcer is like a kind of an internal um, uh, joke because always when we uh, electoral bodies made a decision, always someone complains or many complains. So he was like, what have you done? Everybody is happy with the, with the days. We, actually, everybody was, is. So... The spots are um, uh, runs in every, every every direction, and the mud uh, for the international observer. This is their election, and we respect that. If they won, they can. This is a primary election for the uh, for the mud. They are organized. I mean, we help them. We support them. We give the machines. We distribute the material. We give all the advice and the guns, everything. Uh, for the primary, uh, more if they ask more, uh, but in their own terms, because uh, this is their primary, and we have to respect that. And this is how we we have done it before. And it, obviously, if they want the international observer, they they might invite them if they want. But uh, this is not our election again. It's not a part of. Uh, I mean, we we uh, it's not official, is what I say. They, they, they want. And um, your first question about the districts, 
is a very long, if you have been following, which I believe you have, you have been following uh, 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 our events, you can see that uh, all the districts works uh, in either direction as well. Uh, we made uh, very few changes because the law changed, and when the law changed, we have to change the district as well. Uh, trying to make the more stabilized uh, district and the most traditional in the most traditional way that it were, um, and those small changes worked in 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 either direction, and you can see in the results like in. The, the major the major change were in Sulia, for example, because this is a huge uh, um, uh, district. It's a lot of uh, the role of Sulia is the largest in the country, and uh, the major changes were made in Sulia. And you see how it worked. You can see it in the results. The opposition got all but one uh, seats in that district. I mean, because they say that we manipulate because we wanted to do whatever Chavismo won the district. But uh, I can give you like, uh, many examples where I uh, uh, can show you that it works in diff as, as the district should be working in, in either direction. In Caracas, in Caracas uh, uh, the opposition only got uh, only one, one district. But Position won Caracas as the as the, as the as the whole as the total of the vote. So it's amazing that the government got five, uh, actually six, uh, deputies in Caracas and they lost Caracas. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the of the law. Like uh, here in United States, when the I uh, think it was uh, Bush won the presidential election with less votes votes than the one that lost the election, who was um, Al Gore, for example, is matter of law. We don't make the law. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Lucena Ramirez, for coming by and for answering so many very diverse <laughs> questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you so much.